Hi, welcome along to Arsenal Fan TV. Time to preview the game, the big Champions League game, Bayern Munich versus Arsenal. Now, we know the normal drill. Arsenal, get through the group, get into the next round, get either Bayern Munich or Barcelona, get smashed. We're out for another year. Boom, done, finished. That's the normal drill in the Champions League. However, there's something a bit different about it this year. Number one, Arsenal finished top of their group, which we haven't been doing in recent years. We've always been coming runners-up, but we finished top of the group for once. Bayern didn't finish top of their group. They got beaten by Atletico Madrid. They lost to Rostov and just scraped through in second place, runners-up in their group. So that's a bit different. Um, Bayern Munich are normally smashing up everybody in the Bundesliga, but that hasn't really been the case this year in the Bundesliga. You know, the RB Leipzig and Dortmund and all those teams have been chasing them down really hard this season. So that's been a bit different. Some of the Bayern Munich players that have been, you know, real stalwarts over the years are sort of getting a little bit older. Is this a chance for Arsenal to beat Bayern Munich and actually progress in the Champions League? I mean, my God, do we need it. The league's gone, really. This is our big chance to really do something. Um, and there's been a lot of talk around recently um, from pundits, from different fans saying that, you know what, Bayern Munich are there for the taking this year. Bayern Munich, they're not the same. I can see Arsenal beating them. And I'm like, well, we haven't been playing great either. And I look at the table over there in the Bundesliga and Bayern Munich are still, despite what everyone's saying, are still seven points clear of everybody else in that league, which is, you know, we're saying Chelsea are running away with it. They're eight points clear. These guys are seven points clear. So despite all that, they're still ahead. So what I thought I'd do is contact a good friend of mine, Max. Um, Max does a football channel on YouTube called Forever Dortmund TV, which is an excellent YouTube channel. I thought, let me Skype him, let me get him on here for this preview to find out what Bayern Munich really are like this season. So we're joined by Max right now. Max uh, does an excellent channel called Forever Dortmund TV. Um, check it out on YouTube. And uh, I thought I'd speak to Max over in Germany at the moment because... Max, of course, will know all about Bayern Munich, will know all about how they perform this season. Of course, they're deadly rivals over there in Germany in the Bundesliga. And uh, Max, I wanted to find out from you because we've been getting an impression over here in the UK that, you know, it's not the same Bayern as old. Uh, they've not been playing that great. But when I look at the Bundesliga table, there's still seven points clear of everybody else and quite a few points clear of you guys as well. You yeah, guys are thinking fourth at the moment. So what, what have Bayern been like this season? Well, I mean, first of all, um, Bayern Munich are still an excellent team, still one of the best teams in the world. Uh, I guess the main difference um, between them last year and now is before Bayern Munich are basically a team that were almost invincible, only the really top teams, Barcelona, Real Madrid, and I guess to an extent Atletico Madrid, could really challenge them over two legs. Uh, Bayern Munich are still, like I said, a really good team, but they are beatable. They are actually, performance-wise, struggling a bit in the league this season. Mm. Uh, of course, like you said, they are around seven points clear at the top. But if you look at their performances, um, sort of like what you guys were doing in the beginning of the season, uh, they were winning games by very thin margins, a lot of late goals and what's not. So when you compare to last year, they were really steamrolling teams. They were... Uh, winning games 4-0, 5-0, but now you see them winning a lot of games 2-1, 3-2, uh, whatnot. They are conceding a lot more goals as well too, which is really big uh, with the whole away goals rule. So what's been the difference then between Bayern Munich of last year and Bayern Munich of this year? Well, where can Arsenal sort of get stuck into them and possibly get a result? Okay, well, for me there's basically two big differences about Bayern Munich this year. Um, the first one is the formation. Um, previously under Pep Guardiola, of course, with the whole possession play, they, the formation had a little bit more vertical depth, if that makes sense. Mm. Essentially, they had players spread out vertically across the field. Now they play this sort of 4 3 3, 4 2 3 1 type formation. And um, they essentially, it's a very flat formation, mm. um, which basically just three separate 
banks mm-hmm. and they leave a lot of space in between these sort of three lines. Yeah. And um, when we played them, for example, uh, we had a lot of joy using a very sort of creative and agile number eight player in Mario Goetze. Mm-hmm. He was able to use his quickness and dribbling ability to sort of drift in between these um, sort of that, that midfield because it was so flat, so there's a lot of space in between it. Mm-hmm. So he's able to really do nice interplay to drift in between those lines and advance the ball up the field. Uh, you've got a perfect player for that role, and that's Oxley Chamberlain. He's uh, very good on the ball, of course, very fast. Mm-hmm. And I think if you use him in sort of that central midfield role and have him sort of collect the ball deep and then take it up to the half and use um, his uh, good interplay skills, I think he can really advance the ball into dangerous positions very often. So that's um, basically one of the, the main differences about Bayern Munich this year. Mm. Danger uh, players now. They've got a lot of them. They've got a lot of very good players. Who are the players that also are going to have to really keep an eye on in this game? Arjen Robin and Robert Lewandowski. Um, you know, in the past few years under Guardiola, Robin sort of drifted away from sort of the center of attention. Um, his style didn't really suit the possession game, and he also had a lot of injuries. But this year, Robin has really had a consistent run of games, and now he's back to sort of terrorizing um, on that right wing. Mm, which so, he does to us a lot, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly. <laughs> so you're going to... <laughs> I, w- I would say you've got to start someone like Gibbs, because mm. from what I've seen of Monreal, he's probably not the quickest to deal with the, the trickery of Robin. You probably want someone a little bit quicker to deal with him there. Um, mm. So, yeah, those are the two big um, sort of lineup things mm. I think you guys need to make. Can also beat him. You know, we, 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 we've, you know, over the years, they always seem to knock us out. I mean, the one good thing about this time is that we've got the second leg um, at the Emirates, but can Arsenal beat them over there or can we even get a draw against them yeah um honestly i actually feel quite confident in your guys's chances um especially like you're saying you're going to munich first and by munich's defense is nowhere near the same as it was in the past um i think you guys can put in a really good away performance get a lot of away goals and then sort of just lock up shop for the home leg mm. um just one thing i wanted to touch on about by defense is um Basically, the, the lack of pace they have and how you can uh, sort of take advantage of that. Um, basically, the, the centre-back partnering is um, Javi Martinez and Mats Hummels, who mm-hmm. I, I know pretty well, uh, for obvious reasons. And um, <laughs> the, the best and quickest centre-back, uh, Jerome Boateng, is uh, actually injured, so he won't mm-hmm. be taking part in this match. He's a top and, player. Yeah, so if you play... Um, a really pacey front three. I'm thinking like Alexis Sanchez, uh, Danny Welbeck, and even Lucas Perez. Mm-hmm. I think you can really take advantage of that because both Matsumis and um, Javi Martinez are not the quickest. Um, especially if you... I was saying earlier how if you get Oxley chamberlain to sort of advance the ball up to the, to the attacking third, if you then sort of switch the play there and um, basically make Bayern's defense have to adjust a lot, Mm-hmm. you'll find that Matt Summers has a tendency to sort of get lured out of position. He's a very mm-hmm. attacking-minded centre-back, a bit like David Lutz in the, the World Cup. And um, basically, neither of them are very quick, so you can play the ball in behind them yeah. and get a lot of um, opportunities in behind. Meanwhile, if you play someone like Giroud up front, I think that would be basically a tactical suicide because Matt Summers, uh, one of the best aerial centre-backs in the world. Yeah. Uh, he's very good in the air. Javi Martinez is six foot four, also good in the air. So if you play Giroud, where as far as as far as I know, he's probably best in the air. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't really be playing to um, Bayern's yeah. weaknesses. Yeah, I want to ask you one final question. Yeah, um, now Mesut Özil for Arsenal, he's not been on great form recently. Um, we need him to be on great form tomorrow, but he's not been on great form recently. What have you guys over in Germany made of Mesut Özil? I mean, he's in Germany, he's won the uh, Player of the Year award for... I think he won it this year. He's won it for about the last, what, four mm-hmm. out of the last five years. What do you guys make of it? What have they been saying about Mesut Ozil over there in Germany ahead of this game? Well, obviously, he's a, he's a well-liked player. But at the same time, I don't think we rate him as much as the whole Player of the Year stuff would suggest. Mm-hmm. 
for me and basically every other sort of big Germany fan I know, um, we all tend to think uh, vintage Ozil being Ozil at Real Madrid. We don't really think he's really lived up to his potential at Arsenal. Uh, we think he's not very consistent and he's not really delivering the same amount of assists as he used to at Real Madrid. So even though he has one player of the year so often, um, I tend to look at people like Philippe Lam, Thomas Müller as the really sort of mm. big um, players in Germany. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Max. Um, once yeah, no again, problem. tell us about your channel um, just before you go there. Yeah, so my channel is Forever Dortmund TV. Uh, basically, we're, as far as I know, the first English-speaking fan channel outside of the UK. Um, right now, it's basically just a lot of match reviews, a lot of tactical analysis from myself. But um, in a few weeks, I'm actually going to be doing sort of match day vlogs, fan camps, and really show people what it's like, not just to see the yellow wall from afar, but to really learn what it's like to be inside it and mm. what makes our atmosphere so special. Mm. Well, thank you very much. And you know what? We're going to be having conversations soon, Max, because uh, mm. we're doing a whole thing about atmosphere at the moment at the Emirates, and there's a lot we can learn from you guys. So thank you very much for that, Max. Thank you for that insight. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on. So there you hear it from Max, really interesting things that he said, really, really interesting. Interesting about Meza Ozil as well, about where the, the German um, fans stand on, on Meza Ozil. And he's really, really got to step up in that game against Bayern Munich. He's, he's one of the players that, for me, this is one of the most important games that Meza Ozil has played for Arsenal. He really, really needs to step up. And really interesting what Max was saying about the way to beat Bayern Munich. So let's see what team should play. I've got my team written down here. This is my team to play against Bayern Munich. I've gone Ospina in goal, um, Bellerin at right back, Mustafi and Koscielny and Gibbs. And the reason why I'm going for Gibbs is that I agree with what Max was saying. Monreal has been getting done by pace. I wouldn't want to see him up against guys like Ian Robin and uh, Douglas Costa. I think Gibbs has got the pace to cope with those players better, so I'd start with Gibbs. Now, I was going to go Coquelin and Elneny in midfield, like two players holding, because I was sort of of the opinion that, you know what, let's go out there and hold on to what we've got. Even if we get a 1-1 draw or something like that, that'd be brilliant for Arsenal. But after what I heard what Max said about, you know, the way to beat Bayern Munich, I'm going to change it and I'm going to go Oxlade Chamberlain, who's been brilliant the past few games. Oxlade Chamberlain in there alongside Mohamed El Nenny. I'd leave out Coquelin for this game. Coquelin's form's been a bit dodgy recently. El Nenny, I like what I saw when he came on at the weekend. Full of energy, uh, did well in the African Cup of Nations, so he's full of confidence at the moment. And I think he might be able to cope with that midfield a bit better. So Mohamed El Nenny in there. Just in front of them, Mesut Ozil, who needs a massive game. He must play well in Germany. He's got to show those German fans what he's made of. He's got to show us what he's made of. So Ozil, then on the right-hand side, I'd go Theo Walcott because, as Max said, pace. Pace in behind. And Theo Walcott is a goal scorer. He scores goals, so I'd have him in there. He's got to work hard defensively, but I'd have him in there. Alexis Sanchez down the middle. Um, because I agree with what Max was saying, you know, um, you know, Giroud, you know, you heard what Max said, you know, he, he got guys like Max Hummels, you know, Javi Martinez, they can deal with those balls coming into the box. Alexis down the middle and Danny Welbeck has to start this game on the left hand side. If he doesn't start, I'm going to be upset. I don't know what we're saving this guy for. Unleash him against Bayern Munich. He can score goals. He's quick, he's got the trickery, and also the thing about Danny Welbeck is that he works his socks off getting back, and the defence, you know, particularly Kieran Gibbs, is going to need that added protection alongside him. Iwobi, if he starts, he's good coming forward, but defensively, he's not that great. Start Danny Welbeck, that's for me. You can always bring off Iwobis and Lucas Perez's and people like that off the bench, Giroud's. We've got a team that, if they're concentrated on, on the money, can go there and get a result. And it doesn't have to be a win. A draw, for me, as a draw where we score, as any sort of score draw, I think would be perfect for Arsenal as well. Bring Bayern back to the Emirates 
at the Emirates with a full house, with everybody behind them, we could do something, we could get through. So this is a huge game. Um, I want you guys to put your team in the comments below. Once again, thank you very much to Max for his insight into Bayern Munich. But this is a massive game. We're flying out to uh, Munich, so make sure you check out all our videos. We're going to be out over there uh, following the team. And let's hope it's a real positive response by Arsenal.